Sometimes it takes until an election year before things get done that certain politicians said was going to happen in the beginning. So Georgia is now a constitutional carry state. Let's talk about what that means. Uh, if you have a permit already, what then? Reasons you may still want your permit and some do's and don'ts of carrying a handgun if this is your first time. Part of Brian Kemp's platform when he was running was that he was going to make constitutional carry a thing here in Georgia. Well, it has happened. So you have two groups of people when it comes to constitutional carry. Some people are like, yes, hell yes, that's my right. It is. And then you have people that say people are going to get killed in the streets, left and right. Gun violence is going to go through the roof. This is going to turn into Somalia. Uh, no, it's not. So. People that are already wanting to carry a gun daily, um, I do, and did even before I worked in a gun store, they likely went about it by getting their permit. There were people that were on the fence, didn't want to deal with the hassle. Uh, avid shooters, I deal with people every single day that do not carry a gun, uh, but are very good shooters, are very smart when it comes to firearms ownership and things like that, that may avail themselves now that they don't have to pay the state 80 bucks or whatever to get their carry permit and go through that hassle. Uh, there are folks that likely will start carrying now. On the other hand, the people that you need to worry about, the people that are uh, going to shoot people randomly or are going to break laws and this, that, and the other, well, they were probably already doing that because they probably didn't give two shits about a concealed carry law or about needing a permit. Uh, those people have been out there. Those people will continue to be out there. And as long as human beings are a species that is not extinct, you will have human beings that will hurt other people, uh, regardless of what words on paper say about it. So, uh, as for me, I, I do think it's part of the 2A right. Uh, for me, it doesn't make a big difference. I'm going to keep my permit. I know some of you people are saying, well, why, why would you keep your permit? Well, Number one, the state of Georgia, that serves as a background check. So when I go to buy a gun, make a copy of my driver's license, my carry permit, at least the way we do it at our shop, boom, fill out my 4473, pay for the item, and I leave the store with it. So it's a less hassle. There's no NICS check there, things like that. So that's one reason, if you are a Georgia resident, to go ahead and keep your permit up to date. If you like to buy guns, if you like being able to walk in and walk out uh, without worrying about how quick the FBI is running the NICS check system that day, then by all means, keep a permit. The other argument, and it doesn't really apply to me too much because I can't really afford tickets, so I try not to get them in the first place or get pulled over. Uh, if you got a gun on you, handing that officer a copy of your driver's license and carry permit changes the tone of the conversation as it pertains to firearms. At least in my experience, your mileage may vary. There's a whole bunch of factors there, and I know that's a very subjective one. Uh, but in my experience, typically, you know, one of the first things they normally ask is, do you have a firearm or other weapon in the vehicle? Well, if I say, yes, officer, here's my license and my carry permit, that lets them know that, number one, well, yeah, I do have a gun in the car, but the chances of me being a threat um, to somebody that's not actively trying to kill me are very low. So I know somebody's going to say bootlicker this, bootlicker that, uh, whatever. Uh, whatever gets me home safe at the end of the day to my wife and kids is a win for me. Uh, and that's one of those things that I feel like is worth the whatever, especially with combined with buying firearms easier and things like that. If you don't have a permit and you got no interest in getting a permit, but you are going to avail yourself of this constitutional carry thing, there are some things I want to go over. Number one, it is a responsibility. Yes, it is a right. Uh, yes, it is covered under your second amendment, at least the way I interpret it and the way countless other people do, but it is still a responsibility. You are putting on a tool that has the capability and indeed its intended purpose is to end lives. So if that gun functions as intended, it will discharge a projectile. It's up to you where that projectile goes and when that projectile is fired. If you don't know how to be safe around guns, if you don't know how to shoot proficiently, fix that. By all means, fix that and carry, but you do have a responsibility to not only uh, the people around you, but yourself to make sure that you are safe with that firearm and are a uh, asset and not a liability. Remember, you are responsible for every one of those rounds that leaves that gun. So if you think that, hey, I'm going to carry to protect myself, 
great. Uh, you get in a situation where you need that gun and you begin firing rounds and you don't hit your target because you can't freaking shoot. It's just the sad truth of it. Wherever those rounds go, be it property damage, injuring or killing somebody else that wasn't involved in that situation, you're going to be held morally and legally and probably financially responsible for that as well. So prison is a, is a possibility and then let's not even get into the financial side of it if you were civilly sued. So congratulations, you can now legally carry a gun, but if you have gone this long without making it a point to A, learn how to do so safely and B, uh, hit what you're aiming at and, and be a true... Uh, and truly learn how to use this tool that you are carrying in preparation for the possibility of having to need to defend yourself, fix that, please. Um, there's nothing worse, in my opinion, than, than carrying a tool you don't know how to use. That would be like me getting out here with a chainsaw, except the chainsaw likely will only injure me if I don't know how to use it and not people around me. Uh, so there is that. There is no shame in getting a class. I know a lot of guys say, hey, I was in the military. Hey, I did law enforcement. Hey, I did whatever. Well, guess what? Military and law enforcement are not civilians defending themselves. They are not the same as uh, what you and I now, uh, as a civilian myself, prior military, are going to encounter both from a standpoint of the threat, potential threat, uh, as well as the aftermath, the expectations, and things like that. We do not have air support. We do not have backup. We do not have uh, qualified immunity. We do not have any of that. So there is no shame in saying, hey, I learned how to shoot this firearm uh, in the course of law enforcement or military or growing up busting beer bottles and cans with my dad. Uh, that's completely different than carrying a firearm for self-defense. Uh, yes, I know somebody's going to argue and say the fundamentals of shooting are the same. Sure they are. Side alignment, grip, trigger control, all that good stuff. Yes, those things stay the same. What changes is the stakes, right? Beer cans aren't shooting back at you. You probably don't have your buddy standing behind the beer cans. If you do, yeah, not good. So there is no shame. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times we're expected as men, we have all the answers at any given time. There is no shame in getting help. Uh, there is no shame in if you are a female, um, maybe... Your husband, y'all's dynamic just doesn't work for teaching. That's fine. Um, that's not uncommon and there's no shame in that. So getting instruction outside of your husband or your dad or your brother, uh, that's perfectly fine. Do so um, because that is money well invested, especially if you go to reputable trainers. I'm going to drop some links in the description to people I consider reputable. This is just my opinion. It's a starting point. Um, they don't know me. I highly doubt they do anyway. And I certainly don't give anything back if you use these people so there's no literally nothing in it for me gear selection uh, when it comes to concealed carry very subjective depends on your body style what sort of carrying you're gonna do your needs and things like that but I will give you some things to skip to hopefully save your wallet because buy once cry once is a good thing when it comes to gear now it's not uncommon to end up trying different types of gear different carry positions different holster types whatever but let me give you some to skip that are well quite frankly, a waste of money and probably uh, a liability. So the nylon Uncle Mike's holsters, I don't have one to show you here because I have thrown mine away. But they're nylon, they're cheap, you can get them at Walmart. Very tempting to new carriers to get those. Uh, they're basically a big ball of suck. So there's nothing rigid protecting that trigger. So if you carry a striker fired gun or the safety gets inadvertently knocked off, these things happen, something could still snag that trigger. They don't hold the gun securely. The plastic clip that comes on them breaks. Um, save that $16, $20, whatever it is, and put that towards uh, something like a custom Kydex holster uh, that is molded for that gun is going to prevent anything activating that trigger while the gun is in there and will most likely hold the gun securely on your person. Those are what a holster is supposed to do. Hold the gun securely, prevent access to the trigger, and keep it on you. That's, that's it. Uh, leather holsters are uh, very tempting, especially if you have been around those. Um, I'm not going to say leather holsters are bad, I'm just going to say that you get what you pay for, so Milt Sparks, things like that. Again, there will be links down in the description to some of this stuff. I don't really get helped out if something is an affiliate link as I'm going through this and I'm like, hey, I got an affiliate link for that. I'll disclose that down in the description. My big thing is I don't want to read or hear about people shooting themselves or their gun getting taken from them or, or, or whatever. Uh, that stuff's preventable. So there is that. As far as guns, what gun? What gun to carry? The classic question. Um, shoot as many of them you can get your hands on what you shoot well what you shoot comfortably uh, the, that's good nine millimeters perfectly fine don't listen to people that say that it's not it is a perfectly fine caliber for self-defense to that end 40 is fine 45 is fine too i just think that you get the same thing done for cheaper 
holding more rounds, easier to shoot with nine. That's my opinion, take it or leave it. But that's really not the important part. The important part is to do this safely, uh, do this with a clear mind, very cognizant of the responsibility that you are taking. So with that being said, I'm happy about it. Uh, I think it's an acknowledgement of a constitutional right. Go figure, constitutional carry. Uh, the naysayers are, well, they're naysayers. And quite frankly, there comes a point uh, where as adults we have to say just because something is dangerous does not mean that the state should be limiting people's ability to choose to do so. Uh, dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery, that whole thing. So I know people are going to disagree with that and I'm not trying to get political. I'm not really a big fan of Brian Kemp as a whole package, but this thing I think is good and it's nice that he finally did it. Granted coming up on an election season, but whatever. It is what it is. So if you guys have any further questions on this, especially if you're here in Georgia, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, I do work at a local shop, possibly local for you, uh, in Jasper, Georgia, Mountain Man Armory. So if you have questions, you want to talk more in person, I'm there. Come check us out. Uh, we got some of the best pricing around on guns and stuff like that. And more so myself and the owner actually train and shoot um, as opposed to a lot of gun shops. Well, where they don't. So there is that. Again, we're in Jasper, so come see us. All right, guys. Stay safe. Keep shooting. I'll see you next time.